Thank you. Uh, Representative Gobbler. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's important to, uh, to start the formu formulation about how you look at this bill is first to think about um, do you like cigarettes, do you dislike cigarettes, do you like vaping products or do you dislike vaping products, and then take those questions and throw them right out the window because those are irrelevant. The question is this, do you like in-state retailers and in-state employers or don't you? That's the question we need to think about. And in this case, if we fail to do anything, we are going to put in-state employers and in-state retailers, in-state entrepreneurs at such a disadvantage where we are going to lose them. I think that uh, one of the things that people look for in elected officials is they want people to be willing to admit when they make a mistake. We're all human. And this General Assembly made a huge mistake. And I think we need to consider one possibility in response to some of the uh, arguments in suggesting that, well, this is just such a recent change in the law that we should let it play out before we change it. Um, that would be a terrible idea, no, not, not only one, because it will cause businesses to permanently close, cause those entities to be permanently lost, but two, got to consider the fact that this would not be the first time where a budget project projection failed to play out in an accurate way. There are scores of examples across history where the General Assembly came up with what they thought was a great idea but completely misread the economic environment and got to the end of a budget year and found that that money never came in. One example I'll give you is the tavern gaming of a couple of years ago. Some, some folks in the General Assembly got this great idea that we'll come up with this, this uh, program where taverns can do this thing, but we're going to charge this huge tax on it. And it's going to be all this money. Well, what the General Assembly failed to account for was that the taverns couldn't even afford to get into it. So we ended up beginning the next year with a, with a, with a very large budget hole based on the fact that we had projected revenue from a program that never played out. So now let's consider this. We're projecting revenue to come in based on a 40 percent wholesale tax that these businesses can't afford to pay. So if we do nothing, we doom ourselves to start next year's budget with a shortfall because that 40 percent tax is not coming in. What Representative Wheeland has here is an excellent proposal that actually allows revenue to come in and actually allows those businesses to stay open. I would rather have the five cents per milliliter than have 40 percent of nothing. And I would rather have all the jobs that go with it and everything else. So um, one final thing I'll say is that uh, the budget's a big package. And just because there was an agreement on a huge package doesn't mean every single member agreed to every single detail. There was a lot of us that held our nose to a lot of stuff. And boy, I got to tell you what, I am really thankful that we have an opportunity to have a bite at, 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 bite at the apple at one specific detail that was so odious that we get to fix it with this bill. So Representative Wheeland, I want to say thank you for bringing forward an excellent proposal. Not only will you be able to help small businesses, employers within our state, competitiveness, but I also think that with this proposal you are rectifying an inevitable budget shortfall and we will be in a better condition next June 30th because of the passage of this bill. So I hope we can get it over the goal line. Thank you very much.